Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, lead uh, entropy and exropy. Uh, I hope most of you read of uh, read about it and know how uh, the anatomy and the lead uh, version uh, occur. Um, entropy means inward rotation of the lead, and exropy it's like uh, outward rotation of the lead. And this usually uh, find and uh, we find this in many uh, elderly and children kids. There are classification of both the, uh, the entropian and exropian. First, I'll talk about the uh, eyelid anatomy. Most of you know uh, the eyelid uh, uh, contents and the eyelid uh, layers. Um, the lid, as uh, you know, have a gray line which separates the anterior and posterior lamella. Uh, the gray line is the. Doctor, the sound is a little bit bad. How to go back there, yeah. Bia? Uh, كيف الحين الصوت كويس؟ أي واضح دكتور. Okay, good. Um, so the lead anatomy, as I said, uh, there is the uh, gray line which is the landmark for the surgeons. Uh, it separates the anterior lamellae and the posterior lamellae. The anterior lamellae composed of the skin and orbicularis. The posterior lamellae composed of the conjunctiva and the tarsus. Uh, so in any kind of lead surgery, we have to know these landmarks and uh, we know the anterior and posterior lamella because each has different actions and different uh, approaches. Um, the eyelid uh, usually designed to protect the globe, moisten it, and uh, clean the ocular surfaces. It protects us from the exterior uh, pathogens or trauma or anything by blinking. This is the action of the lid uh, in which the uh, globe gets protected. The physiological integrity and clarity of the ocular surfaces is dependent upon this uh, action of the blinking. So, uh, as I said, the gray line divides both the anterior and posterior lamellae. Uh, and the lead anterior lamellae, they have the glands. Uh, we have three glands in which uh, most of cases of collision or cysts or any kind of uh, tumors arises from these glands. Uh, there are three glands, the nevomian gland and zytic glands, they are modified sebaceous glands. The meibomian gland uh, responsible for the lipid outer layer of the uh, pre-corneal tear film. As you know, the tear film composed of three layers. One of them, the lipid layer, is the uppermost, secreted by the meibomian gland. Uh, the meibomian gland it secretes in the uh, from the anterior surface of the tarsus. The zygotic gland and mole they are either open in the lash in the in the follicle directly or in the gray line in the tarsus. The gland of mole, which is the sweaty gland uh, or abercrine gland. Uh, in the lids, we have the upper, the upper lid differs in the, lo the lower lid, as you know. Uh, there are, uh, I'll talk about the elevators uh, in the next slides. <coughs> we have, uh, we'll start with the upper lids. Let me go back. Uh, the, lower, the upper lid, the, we have there the elevator, aponeurosis, and molar muscle. For the lower lid, we have the lower lid retractors, inferior tarsal aponeurosis, and inferior tarsal muscle. Uh, these are uh, opponents to the upper lid uh, muscles. For example, the lower lid retractors represent the uh, elevator of the upper lid. And the inferior tarsal aponeurosis 
It acts like the molars in the upper lid. The blood supply and the, uh, and the innervation of the lid. Uh, first, uh, they uh, talk about the lymphatics. The lymphatics drainage. Uh, usually, it drains in the sub, uh, submandibular and the preauricular lymph nodes. The upper lid and outer cancer layers, they drain, the lymphatics drain into the preauricular lymph nodes. Uh, like in viral conjunctivitis, you see th there are sometimes preauricular lymph nodes uh, swelling. And the medial and lower lids uh, drain into the submandibular lymph nodes. The upper lid. Uh, the blood supply, as you know, it's from the mainly palpebral artery, which formed by anastomosis of uh, the between the internal and external carotid artery. The nerve supply comes from the ophthalmic and, and maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. The main nerve supplies through the supraorbital and infraorbital nerves. The eyelid position, uh, which uh, holds the lids in its place and in uh, its integrity depends on three factors. Uh, depends on the tarsus, the strength of the tarsus, the um, cancer tendon and orbicularis muscle, their uh, attachment and how they are firm and their firmness. This all acts on the uh, stability of the lid. And, uh, and you can see this by uh, as people age this will, uh, integrity can uh, lose its elasticity and collagen. And then we have this problem like entropion or extropion, as in involutional uh, entropion or extropion. So here we'll talk about entropion, which is an inward rotation of the lid. It is classified as congenital or acquired. And under acquired, we have involutional, which is aging, or cicatricial or spastic. And cicatricial, it uh, results from like uh, any trauma causing shrinkage of the anterior or posterior lamella, any kind of inflammation or uh, burn, or chemical burn or laser surfacing uh, can cause these things. A spastic as in uh, blepharospasm, which causes insulin. And in spastic, we use usually uh, in, uh, Botox injection. Most of you who have uh, rotated uh, with us, must know uh, how we treat the spastic kind of entropy. Um, this we, we talked about this. Okay, um, the tarsal plate, we'll talk about the tarsal plate which holds the integrity and the stability of the lids. Uh, the tarsal plate of the lower lid is shorter than the upper lid. It is about one millimeter thick and has a vertical height of 9 to 10 millimeter in the upper lid and 3 to 4 in the lower lid. Developmental and acquired disorders of the tarsal plate and lid refractors contribute to the development of eyelid malposition. Uh, here you can see in this picture the entropy of the lower lids in the child. Uh, it's a congenital form. And this usually in the congenital cases, usually it happens by overriding of the lower lid retract, uh, lower lid retractors, or lower lid orbicularis, overriding of the preceptal muscle. Usually in kids, it resolves as the child age and bone growth uh, develop, or if it is severe and causing symptoms, then we consider surgery by removing a stripe of the muscle and the skin. And then we uh, suture the muscle, which is the inferior uh, retractors, to the tarsal plate and then to the skin. So here in the um, congenital also it can be due to this insertion of the lower lid retractors or overriding of the muscle of the, of the orbicularis. The treatment is glycation, as I explained. This, uh, in this picture, we can see inward rotation only of the medial area. This is called AB, which is a fold of skin point inward, the medial part of the lid. Uh, in this case, if the lashes are soft and doesn't cause any corneal erosions or uh, exposure keratopathy, uh, we just leave the child because usually by age of uh, uh, one or two, it will uh, reverse. 
but in cases of severe intrauterine cause, and which cause um, irritation of the cornea, then we consider surgery. Here, the surgery just by removing ellipse of the skin and orbicularis. Mm. And the acute spastic intrauterine, as I said, it is the uh, acute blepharospasm. Sometimes it happens after ocular surgery and inflammatory eye condition or um, condition associated with eye swelling and orbicular spasm. Their treatment is botox nowadays. And I've seen tremendous improvement in patients with have a blepharospasm. Like we usually uh, give them like three, four sessions and then the patient disappears if he improves. Uh, here and the involution of anthropium. It affects the lower leg only and is associated with aging. Uh, the causes, there will be horizontal laxity of the lid, dehiscence of the lower lid retractors, and uh, the overriding of orbicularis over the pretarsus. There will be also evolutional changes of the tarsus and anophthalmus. Sometimes anophthalmus also causes uh, intrabium. Uh, patients with anthropium, especially the elderly, they will, they will come to the clinic complaining of irritation, tearing, or foreign body sensation. Um, so you have to examine him thoroughly and see the lid position, the uh, lashes, where it's the di lashes directed to, and from that, and, and also from the fluorescence. The secretion anthropium which is caused by contraction of the conjunctiva or the tarsus, or both, leading to shortening of the posterior lamina. Causes, as you know, many of the secretion we've seen a lot of cases because trachoma was uh, so common here. Uh, trachoma, chemical burns, Steven Johnson syndrome, cicatricial and impugnable adenovirus, mechanical trauma, or blepharoconjunctivitis. Uh, to a patient, as I said, he will be complaining of this uh, uh, symptoms from bad sensation, uh, or he will be having um, corneal uh, corneal uh, ulcers, infections. So uh, we have to examine him thoroughly to see the lead integrity. First, we have here pinch test and snapback test. This um, by asking the patient first, you see you evaluate the lead where it is. Is it entropian or ectropian? If there is tightness or there is a shortening of um, uh, there is tightness of the lid or there is laxity, uh, this will appear through the pinch and snap test. Uh, pinch test, you ask, uh, you pull the, the central part of the lid and uh, anterior, and then you just let it go, uh, and you can check if the lid returns to its position without patient blinking. It means that the severe the you can grade it as uh, uh, grade one, two, or three, according to its severity. If he, uh, if the lid didn't return back without blinking, uh, I mean, if he blinks the patient and it returns, this means it's number two, because it should return without blinking. But if he blinks and then it returns to its position, this means uh, it's number two. And then uh, number three, it won't return back, it will stay flat. This is the pinch test and snapback test. This, uh, the snapback test, you assess the medial and lateral uh, laxity by pulling the medial part of the lid towards the lateral side. And then you check where you can take the, where it will reach, to the limbus or to the pupil. And we assess it accordingly. If it is to the pupil, this will be mild to moderate. And if it reaches to the pupil, this means uh, severe. The same thing on the lateral side. We have to pull the lower, uh, the lower outer part of the lid medially, and check where it is from. This in, from the cornea and the pupil, and this by asking the patient to look straight from us. Here we can assess the medial and lateral laxity. Um, also, here we have to measure the tear breakup time. You put fluorescein and rosemary gas staining and we check the position of the lashes also. Mm -hmm. 
Nee, sorry. Uh, ben jij een keer goed? Go back. Are you mean doctor? Then ah, okay, yes. yes. Okay. So far is good. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you, I mean, concentrating? Yes, father. Okay, um, in treatment of intuitional entropy, I will not uh, to, uh, elaborate on the treatment because it's uh, long procedures and it depends on the severity of the uh, lead and which part location, if it's central, lateral, or medial. But I'll just uh, name a few procedures. This is, I mean, about your level, maybe in the, when, you're, when you reach the fellowship, you can read more about it. And you will see it in the practice, in your practice. There are a version which are for mild or moderate, uh, and it, it depends on the level of the, also the education, the age of the patient, his uh, compliance. All of this, you have to decide which kind of procedure will be suitable for this kind of patient. Uh, for elderly, uh, I mean, uh, immunocompromised patients cannot come to the OR or you need something fast and something like an acute treatment for him. We have the uh, uh, averting suture technique in which we use uh, four ovicral and three areas, central, medial, and lateral. By going deep in the forex, and then we have to come back uh, by taking uh, the uh, inferior uh, refractors, and then we come out through the skin below the lash line. And then we put a bolster in the three areas. Uh, by this, we create fibrosis between these layers of the lid. And, that, and this, in turn, will turn the uh, lids outward. Usually, this uh, suture will uh, stay for two weeks, and then we remove them. This scan, it's good. It works. Uh, it's very effective. I've used it for many patients. It's sure really nice. Uh, but it depends also on the severity of the lid uh, rotation. It usually works for mild to moderate. And uh, the... Uh, uh, we have an other procedures, uh, but by this to correct the, uh, the, I mean, the aim of the surgery here to correct the preceptal overriding, uh, overriding of the preceptal orbiculars and the horizontal lid actually the distance of the lower lid refractors. You have to adjust these three things by um, doing the surgery. Here, the lower lids, anatomy, and uh, that has in the country the um, and here, the, the, the number C, the picture of number C, shows you the area of the suture we applied. It's usually applied three, and that's, I think, more than enough. Here in, uh, in uh, picture number B, it shows you the lateral cancer lid because there is uh, another procedure we can do it, like a lateral tarsal strip, by attaching or tightening the tarsus and attach it to the orbital system, to the orbital rim, sorry. Uh, in this case, you will tighten the lower lid. Uh, we have also here procedures they, uh, they named according to the people who discovered it. We have quiz procedure, quick rest procedure, and Jones. In Jones procedure, he usually do the application of the lower lid refractors. In this procedure, we do a blepharotin below the lid margin. And uh, then we do the, uh, the averting suture, but by opening the lid. And averting suture, the first technique I explained to you about, we don't do an, any incision. We just apply the, the suture. But in this procedure, we have to create a blepharotomy. And we do lateral tarsal strip in case if, if there is a, 
uh, horizontal edge laxatives. In quick rex procedure, uh, he combined both the waist procedure and horizontal lead tightening. Uh, for the cicatricial anthropion, we can, if it is mild, we can release the, we can do incision releasing the fibrosis, and then we treat the lash, which causes tracheosis, by electrolysis or cryosurgery. Cryosurgery, we freeze the lash follicle. And this, in which, I mean, uh, by cryosurgery, we do lead split at the gray line, to separate the anterior and posterior lamella, and then by cryo surgery, we try to freeze the area of the lashes. The side effects of the exercises and the uh, cryo surgery cause lots of uh, disfigurement, laceration, notching of the leg, eyelid depigmentation, and so like this. And this and argon laser also can be used as an other alternative to uh, electrolysis. If we don't have uh, the electrolysis machine, we can use argon laser. Uh, it is under the slit limb by asking the, uh, by uh, applying the corneal scleral shield on the patient's eye, and then we apply laser uh, uh, treatment. Uh, if there is severe entropy and there is contraction of the conjoint fiber and pus, then a graft must be uh, considered in these cases. Uh, we can use the, the graft from the opposite upper lid or from the hard uh, palate. Or if, uh, this is for the lower lid, hard palate, or from ear cartilage and back mucosa. Okay, this is most of uh, most of the procedures that we, we, we do, do on anthropian. For ectropion, it's also uh, categorized into congenital and acquired. Acquired, we have palatic, like seven of Darcy, and volutional, cicatricial, or mechanical. Uh, ectropion, it is out for the virtue of the lead margin. And uh, the etiology of it, usually also there will be lead laxity, medial cancer tendon, or lateral cancer tendon laxity, the cicatricial component, vertical skin tightness, Usually it happens in congenital cicatricial, so there will be shortening of the anterior lamella, and usually we find, we, saw, we see this in uh, Down syndrome patients. There will be also punctal aversion, lower lead retraction, disinsertion, and orbicular asparagus. Uh, in volitional ectropion, the horizontal lead laxity must be caused by dehiscence of medial and lateral cancer tendon. It's unlike the one in uh, uh, evolutional entropy and so there will be a dehiscence of the lower lid retractors. But here there will be a horizontal lid laxity caused by the lateral and medial cancer tendon. Management here we will do lateral tarsal strip. Uh, this um, medial cancer tendon laxity, as I explained earlier, by doing this snap test. Here uh, the the one on the right the picture shows you. Uh, for the lateral cancer straight, and the uh, left one shows the medial cancer. So you check the bank down uh, on the medial side where it will reach, it will, uh, either to the limbus or to the pupil, and then you measure the, the degree of the exorbian. The management usually by medial cancer syndrome glycation, and it depends on the, if the, the exorbian is medially or centrally or lateral. If it is medial only ectropion, then we have to do a procedure called uh, lazy T. Lazy T and, uh, bent and the pentagonal incision. Here we can see in the inferior part, this is the first part shows you medial ectropion. And the uh, picture uh, inferior to it shows you how to treat it by lazy T procedure, which is a pentagonal full thickness incision medially and then something like a diamond uh, excision of the conjunctiva and part of the part of the conjunctiva we, we have to excise it in a diamond shape then we apply a suture this is called lazy t technique horizontal and, and vertical shortening of the medial eyelid um, lower lid uh, lower eyelid retracted with disinsertion it may cause entropy or ectropion depending on the differential forces imparted by 
the anterior and posterior lamella. The management is retractors reinsertion. Here we can see this in this uh, picture uh, um, a cicatricial ectopia, which is caused by vertical tightness pulling the eyelid away from the globe. Causes thermal or chemical burn, trauma, laser resurfacing, chemical peel, inflammation like the dermatitis or infection with herpes zoster. Here we have to assess how to uh, treat this uh, scar either by, I think in this case we need to do a graft, either for second skin graft or uh, if the anterior posterior is affected, we have to do a graft for that part. Here, as we said, they are releasing scar bands, Z-plasty. Z-plasty usually it works for a uh, localized area or for thickness skin graft. Here, uh, also this kind of picture shows you the congenital part of ectopia. Uh, ectopia also can be um, occur following uh, blepharoplasty uh, as in heterogeneous cases if we remove more uh, more skin and muscles, uh, seven nerve osteoporosis, congenital ectopia usually affects the lower lid and caused by vertical deficiency of the anterior. Management horizontal lid laxity, tertiary or skin grafts. And seven nerve palsy, usually we treat the patients also with their botox. It is effective and reduce the tightness. Thank you. This is um, the, the dictation, the presentation. The floor is open for any question. Thank you, Dr. Anouf. Uh, if there is any question, you can write, raise your hand or write it on the chat. Uh, 